Um, I'm going to talk about uh, MHC. And actually, I want to give a, a short idea of what, what the MHC dialect is, what kind of use cases and uses we have seen during the last year, and uh, give you an overview about the most recent improvements and also where we see the opportunity for future developments. So um, the MHC dialect is a dialect which lives in the MLIR core repository, so in the LLVM repository, and it's you, you can um, use it to emit C and C++ code. It was um, initially presented on Fabricator by Jacques from Google, so it was not our idea, um, but we picked it actually up um, and then upstreamed it in uh, June 2021. Um, but it's not only a dialect, it's also an emitter. So what you do is you have the MHC dialect and um, that is um, passed to the CPP emitter and that actually generates the C or C++ code for you. And when we initially upstreamed it, um, the dialect consisted of an apply, a call, a constant, and an include operation. And we had an opaque type as well as an um, opaque attribute. So not really much. Um, the most important operation for us was the call operation, and that essentially represents a C++ function call. You can also pass uh, template arguments to it. Um, and for example, you have the emit C call foo, and that just gives you um, the C++ code or the C code, which you see on the right-hand side. Um, but we worked further on it, and we added types and further operations. So um, we added a cast operation, we added an MSC um, variable and a pointer type. So what you can essentially do, for example, like in the example shown below, uh, shown at top, there you can cast um, an integer to a float, or you can also um, cast a void pointer um, to an integer um, 32 pointer. But Quite more interesting, and also for us, um, we have some use cases, of course, had in our mind, but we learned about use cases out there in the wild, um, which we weren't aware of, and that's what I mainly want to present to you. So one of those is uh, Eerie, and especially Tiny Eerie, where we worked on, but it's also used in tool chains for um, holomorphic encryption. There was also given a talk, a talk yesterday evening, so it's not only the one by Idia Zurich, um, but it's um, even other frameworks use it um, in, as part of their fully holomorphic encryption toolchain. It's used in CERC, and there is also a Cocos emitter, and we have another use case um, that's also yeah, took up by Google, so the machine learning guided optimization framework uses it. Is. And there is another use case like MLIRC C interfacing, which I'll uh, talk about uh, later. So, in Eerie, Eerie is essentially, um, for those not aware of what Eerie is, Eerie is a compiler for machine learning, um, an end-to-end -end compiler, and it mainly consists of the Eerie compiler as well as the Eerie runtime. And the Eerie compiler has a host code generation side as well as a device code generation side. We're just focusing on the host code here. So in the at host code, we have um, a virtual machine and a VM dialect that is normally serialized to VM bytecode and that is then interpreted um, at runtime. But um, what you can do with MHC, you can convert it um, to MHC and just, um, and just create um, C code, um, and that lets you essentially um, skip the bytecode interpreter, so your executable will be smaller. Currently, that still requires a custom emitter, which is used in Eerie, but that's what we use it for in Eerie. So uh, mainly for bare metal targets, where um, execution size, uh, the, the size of the cutables matters. In CERC, CERC actually comes with a system C dialect and its own emitter, but um, it may or it reuses parts of MHC. So um, types are imported, um, and it also has um, patterns. The uh, emitter has patterns to um, for MHC. So actually, um, the MHC opaque type is used and. Uh, uh, for example, in the CPP variable. Another use case we have uh, found out is the Cocos emitter, where you can compile Python code to C++. Um, they stated that they used um, the existing C++ emitter in MLIR as a starting point, but choose to go from a higher level dialects, like um, they represent memrefs and can yeah, directly translate this into Cocos C++, um, or the mass square root is a uh, Cocos square root, essentially. Um, that's another use case. And um, what we initially also used it for is we have um, built a pipeline where you can translate TOSA or stable HLO to C++. So you can directly transform it um, to uh, convert it to MHC. So you start with TensorFlow or recently we played around with uh, TorchMLIR, so PyTorch. 
essentially, and um, you can transform this into C++. And um, this is actually also used, so for us it was a toy project to see how, how, how that goes, and we provide also a C++ header only implementation, so you can transform uh, or translate a mobile net v2 um, to C++, which only um, has a dependency on the C++ standard library. And Google picked this up to um, yeah, kind of um, remove the direct dependency on TensorFlow. So if you want to do um, machine learning guided optimization within the compiler, you probably don't want to rely on TensorFlow within your Clang executable. Um, but that's not all. Um, actually, you can also think about more complicated conversion passes. So it's not probably the best for performance directly go from Tosa to Limit C, so work on tensors. Instead, you want to go, um, probably go to MemRef, um, and there are different use cases out there, like um, Mobileye presented um, during a Compilers for Machine Learning workshop this year, um, because there are use cases where you don't want or can't uh, use LLVM to compile your code. Uh, for example, if you have to use a certified compiler or, your comp or LLVM does not support your target. So, um, we planned around with this and um, have an internal prototype, so it can be all realized with um, MLAR's conversion framework. But to um, be honest, it requires you to add some more operations which are currently not supported in, by the upstream and C dialect. But it um, can be all done with the MLAR conversion framework, so you don't need to fork the emitter necessarily and um, put it all into the emitter. So our most recent improvements were that we added arithmetic operations, and that is, if I was, would have been aware of the Cocos use case, for example, would also have suggested um, to those guys, instead of um, lowering, uh, instead of matching the Cocos um, operation um, directly to a C++ representation, you could have also converted to an emit C add instead of patching arid add f to, um, to the emitter. And why do we need our own arithmetic operations? Actually, if you do want to do um, pointer arithmetics, you need to do it in emit C. You cannot do it in the Aris dialect. Um, furthermore, um, we added an emit C um, compare operation. Um, that those two uh, those operations were done by us. But um, gladly, there are other people out there also now starting to contribute to emit C. So Jacques essentially added an emit C literal operation. And quite recently, um, there were some operations added. Um, the emit C4.1 is uh, still under review right now. Um, these are uh, done by Mobileye. And um, these replace um, some operations which are directly supported in the emitter. So far, um, we used, um, or the emitter also supports some uh, SCF operations, and those are now replaced by equivalent emit C operations which give you more control over it. Um, what we further see, um, cost of primarily driven by the ERA use case, but also what Mobileye is trying to do. Um, we definitely need an array, we need a struct. The second array should be an MHC global. And for example, we also think about an MHC func. Why an MHC func, for example, to, um, to emit CUDA kernels? That could be of interest. But also cons qualifiers, preprocessor directive beyond um, the MHC and include operation are of interest, function declaration, and verifiers to make sure um, that your uh, code um, you emit is essentially, for example, C99 only. And last but not least, um, the development is need-driven. That's quite, um, quite important. So if you have other use cases, please let us know. We will never go there and just implement any operations just um, because we think that someone out there might need it. We will only do it if we are aware that there is a need. And uh, contributions are, of course, highly appreciated. So just shoot me an email or talk to me. I'm around here um, the, till the whole conference or till end of the conference. And that's mainly it. Thank you.